This video demonstrates the generation of torque in a squirrel cage induction motor, employing the principles of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and Lawrence's law of electromagnetic force. To understand how an induction machine operates, let's consider a basic permanent magnet. You'll observe the magnetic field lines surrounding the magnet. Next, we'll represent the magnetic field around the magnet using vector notation. Consider also a rectangular metal loop with a permanent magnet positioned above it, moving at a constant speed. According to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, a voltage is induced in each of its sides, as determined by a specific formula. Due to the loop's closed configuration, this induced voltage initiates a current flow within the loop. As current flows through the loop, according to the law of magnetic force by Lorentz, each conductor carrying the current experiences a force as described by the formula UC. This electromagnetic force acts in a direction either attracting the conductor towards the magnetic field or opposing it to nullify the induced voltage and current, thereby making the electromagnetic force zero. With the onset of the electromagnetic force, the loop accelerates in the direction of the magnetic field's motion, overcoming friction to enter into motion. Now by increasing the number of loops and envisioning it as a metallic ladder, a greater force will be produced. As you can see, the permanent magnet moves at a constant speed, causing the ladder to accelerate. It's important to note that the ladder's speed is always less than that of the magnet because if they were at the same speed, the loop conductors wouldn't cut the magnetic field lines and wouldn't produce any force. If we now consider this ladder to be circular and place a permanent magnet at its center, rotating at a constant speed, just as described for the metallic ladder, the induced electromagnetic force will cause the circular ladder to rotate. This circular ladder can be referred to as a rotor. The position of the permanent magnet within the rotor, whether it's at the center or rotating around it, makes no difference. The crucial factor is the interruption of magnetic field lines by the rotor conductors, which leads to the generation of induced electromotive force. The frequency of the rotor current added to the rotor speed equals the frequency of the magnetic field rotation. Further explanations on this topic can be found in other videos on this channel. In real induction machines, the rotor core material is typically aluminum or copper. To enhance torquing production conditions, rotor cores are designed to have thinner bars and a greater number of them. However, the number and diameter of the bars are determined by the designer's discretion. In induction motors, the rotating field is not generated by spinning a permanent magnet, but rather by connecting the stator of a three-phase motor to a three-phase power supply to produce a rotating magnetic field through stator windings. To learn more about how the rotating magnetic field is created, watch the relevant video on this channel. The rotating field extends through the air gap between the stator and rotor, inducing voltage and generating current, which in turn produces torque, similar to what you observed in the previous section. Induction motors typically use iron cores for both the rotor and stator to increase the magnetic field strength, resulting in greater torque output. Thank you for tuning in to this video. Stay tuned for more in the future. Please subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications, and share our content with your friends. Leave us a comment if you have any questions or suggestions.